Very good morning and welcome to St. Catherine's Rectory and St. Catherine's Church for our service on the ninth Sunday after Trinity. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. And also with you. And we begin this morning by singing our first hymn, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. Almighty God, to whom our hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. 
for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church, open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Speak not for your servant is this you have the words of, of eternal life. Alleluia. Alleluia. Glory to you, Glory to you O Lord. Immediately he made his disciples get the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he 
went up the mountain by himself to pray. was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, say out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. So may I speak in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Before we begin our sermon today, I want just to take you back to some of the words of the college. And those words are, Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts. And that is a real key phrase open our hearts to the riches of your grace that we may bring forth the fruit of the spirit of love and joy and peace so we pray that god would open our hearts to hear his word on the 16th of july 1969 Three American astronauts, Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Buzz Aldrin, were strapped into their capsule at the head of a mighty Saturn rocket, and they were blasted into space at the beginning of their eight-day mission to land the first human beings on the surface of the moon. This historic event took place as the culmination of years of research, development and planning. They were engaged in something no other human being had done before. And yet, and yet, they were just part of a huge team of scientists and engineers that worked together to achieve their goal. Nevertheless, each of the astronauts had to make a huge act of faith that this whole operation would work out. Indeed, their lives depended upon it. Today in the Gospel, we find Peter being invited by Jesus to do something no other human being had done before or after, to walk on the waters of a stormy lake. Here, there was no lengthy preparation, no team of collaborators, just Jesus and a crew of frightened disciples. Nevertheless, Peter had to put his faith in Jesus. He had heard the wonderful teaching of Jesus. He had witnessed the many miracles of healing and casting out of demons. Recently, he'd just witnessed how Jesus had fed more than 5,000 people with only five loaves and two fish. All well and good. But now, this act of faith was personal. For him, it was a matter of life or death. 
But so long as he kept his gaze on Jesus, he was safe. Once he looked around and saw the stormy waters and heard the sound of the wind, his faith weakened and he began to sink. Fortunately, Jesus was there to take him by the hand and to bring him safely into the boat, enabling all of the disciples to declare their newfound faith. Truly, you are the Son of God. Now, every day we make little acts of faith in the wonders and with the wonders of modern technology. Now, most of the time, they are not a matter of life or death, but it is a source of wonder how we can talk to each other and see each other in real time, wherever we are in the world, such as now. Sometimes we take that for granted, that all the wonders of modern science and medicine will work their miracles for us. And if we're honest, we're a bit aggrieved when something goes wrong. I think we can all say that this crisis has brought us all up short in that respect. We are very impatient for a vaccine. We want the answer before the question has been asked sometimes. However, we are so used to what human beings can do through their own, in own ingenuity that this causes us to lose the sight of the bigger picture, of God who holds everything in his hands, the God who is the source of all knowledge and skill. So we need to ask ourselves, where is God in the turbulence of our times? As I say, we can lose sight of the small daily miracles in our life around us. So often we want God to speak up loud and clear so that everyone can see and believe. How many of us have jokingly said to one of our friends, I just wish that God would tell me what to do. Isn't it? <laughs> it's that simple, isn't it? Just tell me, Lord, I'll do it. We've all said that. But in reality, we need to find God in the quietness of our heart and in the quiet moments of our day. And that is beneath the surface of our lives. We find Jesus who invites us to step out of the security of our little boat into the rough waters of everyday life. He invites us to keep our gaze upon him, to listen to him and not to be afraid of the turmoil raging around us. So today let's listen to Jesus who tells us to have courage and not to be afraid, who invites us to come to him through all the storms of our life, keeping our eyes fixed on him and our ears attuned to his voice. We will surely recognise then the enormity of the miracles in our life as we have little acts of love and, serve and service that we are to give and receive with to each other. My words to you this morning are, do not be afraid of the voice of God in the stillness. And there are three short points I want to uh, say in regard to being the key to listening to God's voice. First and foremost, we need to ask him, just as Peter did, is that you, Lord? Is what is happening to me right now of you? Is that you? And sometimes we are fearful of even being foolish of saying those words. Oh, it can't be God, it's just a coincidence. Or don't be silly, you're thinking things too far. Often God works in the smallness of our life that opens up the larger way. 
So we need to ask, number one. Number two is to be alert. In our story, Jesus came in the early morning. In some versions, it says the fourth watch, which is between three o'clock and six o'clock in the morning. Now, I'm not all suggesting that you get up at three o'clock and wait until six o'clock for God to speak to you. Far be it from that. You night owls know that uh, it's difficult to do that. But be alert. And almost like the old radios that we used to have, where you used to adjust the tuning arrow, and you used to listen to all the funny squiggles and squirms until eventually you got the right passage. Then you can listen to what God is saying. And thirdly, believe. Believe like Peter did. With his eyes fixed on Jesus, he asked, he was alert, he tuned in, and he believed. So many of us get to this point and then draw back. Ah, oh, well, it's not for me. Well, it's okay for you. You know, you, you've been going to church all, all your life. You, 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 it's, it's in your nature, isn't it? I, I can't believe that God will do that for me. Believe that God wants to be so involved in the intimacy of our lives. His love is towards you, not your neighbour, not your friend, in which he is. But in particular, this morning, I want to speak to you as an individual. God is for you. And so often, the thing that stands in front of you, this mountain that you think can't be moved, will be moved if you can do those three small things to ask to be alert and to be to believe and as i was thinking about this mountain or this problem or this illness or whatever that stands in front of you at this moment in time so often i think that the real wisdom here is that you may see something that is in front of you, this mountain. But in reality, the mountain is in your heart, in our heart. And that's the wisdom of God. And once you believe individually that God can move that mountain, irrespective of the physical mountain in front of you, things will happen. Things will move and God will move in your life. I would ask that you keep hold of the collect and pray it every day. Really drill down into it. Open your heart. So this, this week, say before God, in your own quiet time, Lord, I open my heart to you that your grace may flood it, that your grace may fill it, and your Holy Spirit is welcome here. And I think that wonderful things will happen as a result of that. If we dare to ask, if we dare to tune in to God's channel, and if we dare to believe that it's for me that God is speaking, and not for my next door neighbour. Amen. Amen. So we now say the creed together. And if you're in church, let us, let's please stand. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, 
On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for our prayers. Thank you for your goodness and for your blessings over us. Thank you for your great love and care and for your sacrifice that we might have freedom and life. Forgive us for the Help us to set our eyes and our hearts on you afresh. Renew our spirits, fill us with your peace and joy. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Lord God, in your spirit you can make us your own. We pray for the church here where we have the freedom to worship and in those places where worship is different. We pray for the leaders across the world. Grant them your grace to share our message. Make our hearts respond to your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our wonderful world and all of creation within it. Every day, every moment, we place your hand of blessing upon our creation. In your touch, in your words, every flower, every bird, every animal, everything remembers the deep, perfect loveliness within. The deep, perfect loveliness of you. Make our lives bear witness to your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we pray for peace, justice and reconciliation throughout the world. We pray for Beirut. We pray for the honouring of human rights and for the relief of the oppressed. We give thanks for all that is gracious in the lives of men, women and children. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. We pray for those who are sick or in need. We pray for everyone affected by the virus, that they have suffered presence and hospital. Keep them safe in this uncertain time. We pray for our food family, for those who volunteer and those who use it. May they all know the love that is given in each donation. Make our wills eager to obey and our hands ready to heal. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for the lives of those who have gone before. For Hannah Harvey, Douglas Mears, Florence Mary Denson, and all those named in the book of remembrance for this week. Make our voices one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son. Our Saviour Jesus Christ. Our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And so you could unmute yourselves for a moment and say hello to everyone. Peace with you. Peace be 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 with you. People we can see. Yeah. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, churches. Peace with you. Peace with you all. Peace. 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 Peace
Where's um, Alice's parents? Where's Father Terry? Where's Frank? Martin! Yes? Peace be with you! you. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Now you can see me, hopefully. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word. And all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of your angels in heaven, evermore praising you and sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendor and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love made perfect in our human weakness. Amen. Lord, we believe. Embracing our humility, Jesus showed us the way of salvation, loving us to the end. He gave himself to death for us, dying for his own. He set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. Amen. Lord, we believe. On the night he died, he gave himself up for us all. He took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Lord, we believe. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it. In remembrance of me. Amen. Lord, we believe. Therefore, we proclaim the, the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high, and we long for his coming in glory. Amen. Amen. Come, Come, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus, as we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit. Let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us perfect offering in your sight. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Look with favour upon your people and in your mercy hear our cry, the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free and fill your church with power from on high. Amen. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, St. Catherine, St. Peter, and all your saints at the table in your kingdom when the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So please now do unmute yourself as we say the Lord's Prayer together. 
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. So we're now going to listen to our communion hymn. So we say together our prayer of communion in separation. Lord Jesus Christ, life giver and good physician, here you meet me in our need. In a world marred by corruption and marked by death, draw me into true life by your selfless sacrifice. Help me to live for others and not myself. May I, who cannot receive you sacramentally, embrace you more fully, my heart, mind and soul. 
help me to unite myself to you in spirit, so that I may be drawn closer to those from whom I am isolated in the body, who share in your life given up in death for us all. May we grow together into a love and a richer and more profound communion of life. Amen. And now we're going to have uh, a little notice. Friends of St Catherine's, forgive me for not being properly dressed, but we've chosen to film this in London on what is probably going to be the hottest day of the year. So what I'd like to do is invite you to a come dine with St Catherine's on Saturday the 12th of September uh, in a slightly different format. It will take place in your home with any number of guests you care to invite that are allowed by the government at the time, or you could do it on your own. And your favorite meal from your favorite restaurant, you'll reproduce it. And the difference in cost between that and the cost of the ingredients, we'd like you to donate to two worthy causes. You've been amazing in your support of Christian Aid over the years and of keeping up your regular giving to St. Catherine's during the pandemic. So we have had to think of new and inventive ways of actually raising funds because both organisations are obviously suffering. We hope you'll get behind it. We would like to organise a pre-dinner Zoom aperitif for those who'd like to. And perhaps you could take photos of your event which could be uploaded to St Catherine's website and the YouTube channel. We hope you get behind it. We hope you have some fun and have a really good night and raise a little bit of money for, as I say, two worthy causes. If you'd like to find out more or to sign up, you can contact me or get in touch with Christine Greenway, who I'm sure will be able to help. So thanks in anticipation and we look forward to seeing you on the night. Shirley, is there anything you want to say? Cheers. Typically. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> She stole the show, didn't she? <laughs> Absolutely. Poor old John. <laughs> dear, dear. So hopefully that's on your notice sheet. Please do read the rest of the notices. It's been lovely to see you all today. Please uh, do bear with us as we try to sort out the grem grem gremlins over in church. I'm sure that we'll We'll sort them out. We now have our dismissal. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen and settle you in the faith and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you and be with you always. Amen. So I think I'll say, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. So please don't forget to raise a glass at 12 o'clock and post your pictures. And we'll see you throughout the week and have a wonderful day today. So you can unmute yourself and I'll put you on gallery view and you can say your farewell to people. Bye everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.